knowing that everything had now been finished and so that scripture would be fulfilled. Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. You can have a seat. Jesus said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Put yourself at the foot of the cross tonight. Where does your mind go when you hear the phrase, it is finished? The one that you had heard about, the one that you had been following, was hanging there for all to see, declaring it is finished. Where does your mind go? Maybe it goes to the beating. We know that Jesus was lashed 39 times, that he was beaten so badly that it says his flesh was hanging in strips off of his skeleton. He was beaten beyond recognition. It is finished. Does your mind go to the crown of thorns that the soldiers wove together, thrust on his, set, his head so powerfully that it pierced his flesh, causing blood to drip from his brow and an utter sign of mockery? It is finished. Does your mind go to the sponge with the vinegar that is thrust into our Savior's mouth? The burning and the stinging on his lips and as it went down his throat. It is is finished. You're sitting there at that time. You're watching Jesus take his last breath and then die. You had to be thinking, that's what he's talking about. It's finished. The pain, the struggle, the suffering, the torment, the anguish. It is finished. You see, John, in his gospel, he uses a phrase. This phrase, it is finished. We only see it used in this moment. This phrase is a sign of completion. It's a sign that it has been finished and it will always be finished finished. But you see, there's one more meaning, one more purpose for this specific phrase. This phrase was used oftentimes by merchants, and what it would symbolize was that the debt had been paid in full. Do you see the beauty in Jesus' words? It is finished. The debt has been paid in full. 
But what is this debt? Paul in his letter to the Romans says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For all have sinned. Not just the ones that we deem as, as thieves or criminals or, or people that are not as good as we are, but, but Scripture tells us that each and every one of us has sinned and falls short of God's glory. Not one of us is good enough to get in on our own. He goes on to say that the wages of sin, the cost of that sin, is death. It's death. You and I are faced with a dilemma. You and I have fallen short. Our sin has gotten in the way between us and our Father. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And so we must pay for that debt. No one gets out of it. That debt must be paid in full. But you see what happens? I, you, we deserved this cross. The wages of our sin was death. We should have been nailed to that cross. We deserve to die because of who we are and what we've done. Because no one is good, not even one. We had a debt that we had to pay. I was listening to someone's story just this past week. And he shared about a moment a few years ago where he was standing with a group of his friends outside. And another person walked up to him and his friends, pulled out a gun, and began shooting. He watched his one friend drop to the ground, dead. He watched his other friend try to run but he was shot also, dead. And so this person in, in utter fear turns and starts to run. And just as this person holds the gun up, for him, his other friend runs behind him. And as the man pulls the trigger, his friend took the bullet. And I was listening to this man's story, and he said, that bullet was meant for me. I deserved that bullet. I should have been the one that was murdered that day. But my friend took my place. That is what happened on this cross. You and I deserve death. You and I deserved to have to pay the price for what we've done. But listen to what happened. Romans 5.8 says, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We were faced with a dilemma, and the dilemma was death. None of us is good enough to earn anything in this life, let alone eternity. And so we had a debt that needed to be paid. But the problem was, we couldn't do it. And so Jesus stepped in and said, I will. He took the beating. He took the mocking. He took the nails. He took the pain. He took the struggle so that we didn't have to. He 
he demonstrated his own love for us. That while we were still sinners, Christ died for you and me. That's what makes Friday so good. We deserved nothing. We deserved the pain. We deserved the mocking. We deserved hell for the rest of eternity. And Jesus said, no, not my son, not my daughter. I choose the cross. And we celebrate tonight our freedom from that debt. Because it was paid in full. Imagine this. Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, laying on the cross with the hammer and the nails to his hands and his feet. Paid in full. Paid in full. You fell short last week. You said some things you wish you could take back. You made some mistakes. Paid in full. You made some decisions that got you in a place that you don't know how to get out of. Paid in full. Nothing, nothing is too bad for this cross to forgive. Nothing. Because it was paid in full. You see, this cross is not a symbol of guilt. It's a symbol of grace. Grace upon grace already given. Grace to say, I know what you deserve. But I choose to take your place because you mean that much to me. Paid in full. That addiction you can't shake, paid in full. That relationship that seems it just won't be restored, paid in full. The life that you look at and say, I've just done so many awful things, paid in full. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He took your place to give you the seat of honor for all of eternity. Your debt has been paid in full. And so tonight, we honor this cross. We honor this symbol of grace. Symbolizing that our debt has been paid in full. There was nothing that we ever could have done that could have paid for it ourselves. So he stepped in and took our place. And so tonight, in just a moment, we're going to come forward and we're going to give each of you a nail. And I want you to come to this cross. I want you to take that nail. I want you to take a hammer and I want you to hammer that nail into the cross, not as a sign of guilt, but as a symbol of grace because you are paid in full. And because of that grace, you have been granted the opportunity to have a relationship with our Lord and Savior, the one that took the place for you, is saying, now, here I am, come to me. He loved you that much. And so he says, come. Come. So many of us stay so far away from our Savior because we feel like we're just so bad.
What do you think he saved us from? Come home. Paid in full. Father, I love you and I praise you. You are the only one that is worthy of our adoration. You are the only one that is worthy of our honor. You are the only one that is worthy of our lives. Father, we give ourselves to you in this place because you gave us your son on this cross. And our debt has been paid in full. Father, I pray right now as we sit here with our, with our hearts turned to you. Father, that you would show us specifically in our lives right now, in our minds, in our hearts, what it is that you've paid in full for our lives. Show us what you saved us from. Give us a picture. Give us a word. Give us something to show us what you died for in our lives so that we could have eternal life. Father, I pray that as we come forward, as we fall at the foot of your cross, as we hammer those nails, that with each strike of the nail, it would ring true in our minds and our hearts as a symbol of victory and a symbol of freedom. Thank you, God, that you loved us that much to take our place.